Tonight on Localite, John Huffman sits down to discuss his past as the owner of Q104, as well as his new position as a state representative. John is no career politician, and his insights into the world of government and the happenings in Salem make for a unique and compelling take on the world of politics. That's all coming up on Localite. Well, John, thanks for coming on, making time for us. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's great to be with you, and good to see you again, John. You too. It's been a long time. It really has. You know, when when you're in Salem for six months at a time, you really kind of lose track. You try to get back into the district as often as you can, but it's not the same. You, yeah. you fly in on Friday night, do the mail and the banking and everything, and then head back out on Sunday morning yeah. back to Salem for a, a quite a rigorous schedule. Which I want to get into all of that and sort of how you even got into politics. But let's, let's go way back to the 80s when you got here and got involved with Q104. It eventually ended up owning it. There's got to be a whole story there. Tell me about that. Catch me up on all of that. Well, it's kind of interesting. It would have been in 87 or 88, something like that. I had been at the radio station for two or three years. And one afternoon, um, a guy about my age stops by the radio station, and uh, he introduces himself as Greg Walden. First time I had met Greg, and, and uh, we had a great discussion. Up to that point, there had been an open seat for actually the, the seat that I hold now. And I had seriously considered putting my name in uh, and running for the election that time around. Greg came by, introduced himself, and said that he had been working back in Washington, D.C., and he had decided to move back and run for that seat. Well, you know, I think I'm halfway bright, and uh, Greg Walden, with his name, his father having done the job uh, prior to that and all of his D.C. experience, I thought, uh, you know, I, I think I'm just going to support Greg on this one and let him go. And, of course, the rest of that's history. We know how well Greg has done in, in yep. representing us over the years. And... Um, then, in, you know, fast forward to 2007, I had just sold Q104 and we moved it to Seattle. And uh, my predecessor, John Dallum, who had done this job for about four years, ended up resigning at the very end of the 07 session. And uh, I knew about it, but I had just gotten back from a, a trip to Greece and, and was focused on my future and other things and really hadn't thought that much about John resigning. And, and one day, Greg Walden calls and says, Hey, John, this is something you need to do. You need to step up to the plate and, and take John's, John's place. You'd really do well at it. And I said, Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not so sure because I'm thinking about maybe taking life a little easier. And so that's kind of how I, I ended up. I put my name in the pot for the, uh, it was an appointment process. When a member of the legislature resigns in mid-session, he um, it goes to an appointment process. I put my name in, and it ended up there were eight of us total running for the slot, and uh, I ended up getting it. And here I am. So, 07, you sold the station. Right. And then you went into Congress in within a year? The, the state legislature. No, actually, uh, our last day on the air was March 30th of 2007. And uh, I, I went off to school. One of the car dealers here in town, uh, Griffith Motors, said, uh, what are you going to do when you uh, get the station sold and gone? And I said, uh, I'm not going to have employees. And he, he <laughs> thought I misunderstood. It was Ray Felton that worked at Griffith Motors and, and did the used cars. And he said, no, but what are you going to do? And I said, I'm not going to have employees. <laughs> and and uh, then he laughed because he got it. And I said, yeah. no, really, I haven't, haven't quite decided why. Do you have something in mind? And he said, uh, you know, I need somebody to repair and repaint these plastic bumpers on cars out here. And he looked out over the used car lot, and I'm like, what? I, I don't get it. You know, mm -hmm. repair and repaint plastic bumpers. So anyway, he got me some information, and because I didn't have any set plans. Mm -hmm. The only plan that I really had was my wife Karina saying that I was not going to take it too easy. She wasn't going to, she still worked for the circuit court at the time, and she wasn't going to continue going to work you every day and let me, yeah. no, no, she wasn't going to let me play too much. <laughs> so Ray got me the information. I ended up going to school in Orange County for a couple of months, learning how to repair and repaint plastic bumpers on cars, and uh, came back, and, and occasionally, I, you know, I do the legislative job about 50 hours a week so I don't have a lot of time yeah. to do the bumpers but occasionally so you're, you're still doing that 
I am. Oh, uh, okay. I'll, I'll do an average of one or two a week, uh, which is about all I can handle. And uh, David Griffith or Bob Stone will give me a call and say, hey, I got a bumper. Do you have time? And I'll take it and do it. All right. So let's go ahead then. Let's focus on as you're transitioning into um, becoming a state representative, what exactly that is versus like a congressman. And it sounds like in the 80s, you actually had an interest in Congress. And so was this when this started to come together, were you thinking, wow, finally, I'm, I'm getting to do this? Or was it sort of like, like you said, with uh, the gentleman that sort of pushed you in that direction? It was more of you need to do this and you're kind of obliged. I guess kind of a combination. Um, you know, it came about so quickly. I guess I really didn't have a lot of time to um, dwell on, you know, the process of how I got there. Um, ironically, in retrospect, all of those years in, in business and in radio really was preparing me for the job of being state representative. Yeah. Um, public speaking and, and the business aspect of it and being able to work on legislative committees and task forces with a business mind and budgeting and being able to understand and help guide the budgeting process for the state. So I don't know that I, had, I, I guess back in the late 80s, I had kind of put that dream on hold or, or kind of forgot about it. And then when the opportunity came about, I thought, you know, maybe it is a great time to jump back into that dream or that idea. And um, so, you know, every well, I should back up. The voters in November of last year uh, approved annual sessions. And so basically my schedule now is in the odd years, which we're in right now, we have legislative session basically January through June. So a few weeks ago we just finished up and, and I moved back home and I'm back in the district doing constituent work. And, and I can explain that in a bit if you'd like for me to. Yeah. Uh, but we work every day uh, during the long session on the budget and balancing the budget for the state of Oregon. So every day I'm going into the Capitol in Salem and going to my office. And then from there, at about 7 a.m., I'm just hitting the road running. And the, the typical day is 7 a.m. to 7 or 8 p.m., and then after that, I'm sitting at home uh, on the couch with my laptop doing emails and uh, constituent correspondence, answering questions. And Karina works with me. She's my wife, and she mm -hmm. works with me in my office. And, and I, I tell constituents that we are the best bargain that, uh, that they have as far as what their taxes go to because uh, Karina and I just are 24-7. You know, yeah. And she, she can drive me to events and I can be reading or uh, I can be driving and I can be dictating a, a letter to uh, Congress or some agency or constituent and so, so you know great we're, team there. we're able to work a lot together. Yeah. Well that's cool. Well more, more to come when we take uh, we come back from the quick break. More with John Huffman. We'll be right back. After the break. Typically at 8 or 8 30 I rush off to a uh, committee hearing and I'm, I'm involved in the House Education Committee uh, there's a joint House and Senate Audits and IT Committee, and I'm co-chair of a Ways and Means Subcommittee on Transportation and Economic Development, 